Hi, in the third and final video of the search mini series, we're going to have a look at how to create a custom search filter. We're going to start off with the demo of what we want to achieve. So what we have here is a normal search page here, and I have a normal drop down. I have a tag cloud. This is the out of the box tag cloud and my own tag cloud. Now, the problem with the out of the box tag cloud is when you click on something, it actually posts back, which is not really very user friendly. So what I wanted to do is actually create a, a tag cloud that actually works without having to post back to the server. Let's see how this is done. To start off, what I need to do, of course, is create a new component so I'll go to my system settings <coughs> features and I'll create a new module called custom tag custom tag cloud I'll just leave it in feature of course it's recommended to create your own folder just for maintainability but we're just demoing, so I'm not really going to go into that. Now, the next step I need to do is actually clone the dropdown. I see that the functionality itself is very similar to the dropdown in terms of what it does. So what I want to do is actually just clone the dropdown rather than having to re-implement the controller and model and so on from scratch. So I'll go to my layouts renderings, feature, experience accelerator, search, and then I'll look for my dropdown and script clone rendering. I'll call this tag cloud. Now, before we get started actually changing things, so I'm just going to Add these and I'll copy and I'll call it custom tag cloud. Okay, one important note here is this rendering CSS class is what will connect this component with the backbone. So as soon as I create a new one, let's call it custom dash tag cloud. The functionality of the actual filter will not work anymore. So proceed and I'll show you what. Let me just check something. I think, yeah, I did do a mistake instead of putting it in the right location. So let me just clone again. And put it in custom tag cloud. Custom. Custom tag cloud. So let me make it custom dash tag dash cloud. Just make sure I've added it in the right place. And now it's closed. Now the next step is just to add it to my SXA site. So I'll just add module. And I'll add my custom cat in tag cloud. Next, I'm gonna add it to the page just to show you that it's not currently functional. So if we open here and add it, it will not work because the backbone is not hooking into it so it's really not doing anything so let's just go below that and add here custom tag cloud just create a new configuration
and then I'll add the facets for it. So I'll add the title facet as well. And I'll save. It is it looks very similar to this one, which is the normal drop down since I just cloned it, but it will not actually function because backbone is not hooking onto it. So I'll just show it to you in preview. You can see here it's empty, whereas this one has some values. So the next thing I need to do is actually copy the JavaScript file for the search and for the custom drop down itself. So I'll go to my base themes. And here is my search drop down. I'll download that one. And I'll just open it with, actually, I'll change its name first to custom tag cloud. And then I'll open it with quote custom tag cloud. I'm just renaming the actual object and here I'll write as custom cloud. okay so far I haven't really changed anything in the actual custom tag cloud but what I want to do is get this function to start displaying what I want it to so by default what Sycore as we previously discussed what Sycore search and backbone do is they actually use this template for any data modeling. So this is where all the content is gonna, or how the look and feel of the actual components are gonna be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just change the names here. So facet dropdown model is gonna be changed to custom tag cloud model. Let me actually do something else, just copy it. Custom tag cloud. Cloud model and the view as well. Let's change the view's name from drop down view to custom tag cloud view. So that's the first step. The second step is actually to change the template. So this is this current template uses option sets, as you can see here, for the drop down. What I want to change this to is an A, so that they're linkable. And as you can see, that what it does here is it has an A tag, then the data facet name, which comes from the result name, and whether it's selected or not. And the result of name or an empty text as well as the result count now I might decide at the end to remove the result count but so far let's just keep it the next thing I need to do is we all know that there is a change function for option sets so as you can see here it hooks on the change dot facet drop down select dot update facet but I do not have a change right now because I'm not using an option set so the first thing I'm going to do is actually change how my UI looks. So for some reason, my okay, I'll just open it like that. So I'll go to my views and then drop down filter and then custom tag. Uh, custom tags. Um, I think that's how, what we called it. Let me just check the name because I don't actually remember what I called it. custom tags so it's only custom tags so I've actually opened the wrong file the right one should be called custom tags perfect 
Okay, let me just open it up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove this drop down list because I don't want a drop down list anymore. But you have to realize something that this drop down list has this select which is being used in the HTML in the JavaScript, I mean, sorry. Right, so if we go back to the custom tag cloud, we're going to see that this select is being used in update facet as well as in multiple other places. Like here to find it to actually get the element and so on and so forth, and here to get the drop down and so on. So, what I need to do is after removing that, I'll just add this class here. Now, because by default, as we said, an option set does have a change. So this is what we, the sidecore was hooking onto in the change here. But I don't have a change since I'm actually using now A's or anchors. So I'm going to just change this to facet dropdown select item and on the click of it. So I need to add this class to my A. <coughs> okay. Now, next step I need to do is just make sure that anything that's relying on option sets gets removed or gets changed ultimately. Which, and the m most important one I would say is this one here. So this is the update facet. So I can see here it's getting option selected, which we don't have right now. So by default, it, when you click on an item, it doesn't change to selected. And then it gets the facet name and the signature ID. Now I'm going to change this to be param.target. So I'm getting the currently clicked item and I'll change this one to param.target.attribute attributes of data facet B dot bang. I think that's how you do it. Let me just look at my cheat sheet. So here, so this is the previous version that I'm actually working from. So update facet. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. So it's attributes. I'm not sure if I put it like this. Yeah, I think I put it right. So now what this will do is it will actually get the selected option based on param.target and the facet name dot value directly from here. Okay, the second thing I need to do here is just make sure that everything else is in order. So as you can see here, I'm selecting the drop down data attributes, facet heading, all these have no problem, but this one which is the not select option, it doesn't really make sense because I'm now adding an option set within an item that should not be an option set, right? Because I'm now adding A's only. And here it's called facet dropdown and here as well, which is incorrect. Our new name should be custom dash tag dash cloud because this is the name of our rendering that we created. So
course I should have used a different name than facet drop down select but this is just for demo purposes so I won't go into that too much next what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add this of course you should not add it to the actual sxa scripts you should add your create your own base search extension or something and add it there uh, you can ask me why it's in the base it's just because we want to make it as a component that's readily available across all sites and not dependent on each theme okay so i'm going to add the custom tag cloud one important thing to take care of is that if this is added before the search and base model and base view it will not work because it relies on them within the code that we're using now so i'm just going to go and push it down here now let's go back to our search page and refresh it and here we are at least now we can see the right data so we can see that it's retrieving the data correctly and showing it correctly the next step I need to verify is actually clicking on it works and there you have it we've now created a custom tag cloud that works directly without having to post back like the out of the box one of course we can enhance the and feel maybe i don't want these ones or these counts beside each one it just doesn't look very nice so i'll go back to my visual studio and again all i need to do is just change the template itself so i'll go back to the template here and I see that result count is added here. So I'll remove that. Save, re upload. and there you have it it doesn't have the actual numbering beside each one of course you can do whatever you want in the look and feel you can change how you want it to change and remember at the end of the day what's actually happening in the background is just that it's adding title equal whatever here at the top now if I want multiple items to be available here I can I think just do like that oh, that didn't work. so this facet doesn't really support multiple values no problem okay thank you for watching and hope you understood now how you can create your own search filters and customize the search filters and understand even how they work thanks for watching